On behalf of Roy Waldron Elementary, this is Michelle Huddy with this year's Spring Planning Meeting Slideshow. Thank you so much in advance for taking the time to view this slideshow and to give us valuable feedback afterwards. I'd like to begin by explaining the purpose of today's Spring Planning Meeting and Slideshow. Our main goal is to bring together those who have the greatest stake in the welfare of our students. That's including parents, family members, administrators, teachers, and our community representatives to ensure that our federal funds are spent in a way that promotes academic success for all students. The information discussed today and any decisions made are our first steps in creating our school improvement plan and our budget for the upcoming 2021-2022 school year. This planning process helps to ensure that federal funds are spent in a way that helps guarantee success for all students. Before we get into specifics, I feel like it's important to go over what a Title I school-wide program is. So Title I is a federally funded program. The funds that we receive each year are based on the number of our students receiving free and reduced lunch. Those funds that are given to Roy Waldron are used to benefit the whole school. And these funds are supplemental and must be spent in accordance with federal guidelines. So what does a successful school-wide program look like? What are we aiming to do with this funding? Some things that we achieve to accomplish are working to attract highly qualified and the very best teachers. We provide teachers with high quality training throughout the year. We aim to increase parent and family involvement, improve student achievement, and we are gonna monitor that student data regularly. We want to implement new strategies to consistently improve our instruction. We want to assist our incoming and outgoing students with positive transitions. We want to consider the needs and suggestions of our community during decision-making processes, this being one of those. And we want to coordinate federal, state, and local services so that all of the different funding pools can be used together to create a very successful school. So how do we know if our strategies are working and we're on our way to achieving our goals? We have four ways that we're gonna talk about specifically on this slide. The first is EasyCBM. This is our universal screener and it screens all students on basic reading and math skills. It's used to progress monitor students receiving tiered interventions as well. iReady Math is what we use to screen all students three times a year in addition to ongoing online instruction and assessments throughout the year. TCAP or 10 Ready is our state assessment that we give at the end of each school year. And then our common formative assessments are used to assess students' mastery of the grade level standards and essential skills throughout the school year. Now let's look at some specific data from some of those areas. Our Easy CBM reading data is shown here. At the top, we have our passage reading fluency, where students are asked to do a one minute timed read. According to our data so far this year, it shows that we need to focus on students both below the 10th percentile, especially in grades four and five, and students above the 90th percentile so that they continue to show growth. Below is our comprehension. Students in the third and fourth grades both showed growth in moving students from the tier two to the tier one range, while second grade students showed growth and those performing above the 90th percentile. When looking at our school-wide iReady reading data, we see that we were successful at increasing the number of students in the tier one range by 16% from the fall to the winter benchmark. An opportunity for growth is for us to continue to see students move out of the tier three range and into tiers two and tiers one. And when looking at our school-wide iReady math data, we're seeing that we were successful at increasing the number of students in the tier one range by 17%. And an opportunity for growth is for us to continue to see students move out of that tier three range, just as we did in reading. According to our most recent 10 Ready and TVAS data, we're really focusing on opportunities for growth. We're attributing our lack of success on 10 Ready to the challenges that we faced last year due to the COVID protocols. 
We've worked really hard this year to improve both reading and math scores by fully implementing the new EL reading curriculum with fidelity. We've had weekly PLC meetings to plan and analyze data in both reading and math, and our instructional coaches have worked one-on-one -on -one with teachers throughout the building to collaborate and strengthen Tier 1 instruction in both reading and math. So knowing our data and where we want to go, we use that data to set some priority goals from our school improvement plan every year. Our four priority goals this year on the school improvement plan were ELA growth and achievement, math growth and achievement. We aim to ensure that all students receive a well-rounded education and the opportunity to learn. And lastly, RWS will recruit, retain, and train effective teachers and building leaders to support our growing and diverse student population. The next step in the process is to take our Title I funds and prioritize them based on the before mentioned data and prioritized goals. This slide shows a breakdown of how we prioritized our funding for this year. The following slides are going to look at some specific ways that those funds were spent. As you can see, our highest priority was to fund personnel. Of all the personnel on this slide, the following are, f are paid for with Title I funds. Two instructional coaches, seven of the academic interventionists, and the one behavior interventionist. In thinking about the before mentioned instructional coaches and academic interventionists that are funded with Title I funds and those that are not, we wanted to give you a break shot of those responsibilities and a little snapshot of what they do and how they contribute to the success of our students. They serve 68 intervention groups, which would mean 283 student interventions and the planning, progress monitoring, and communication that comes along with that. They've helped to provide two professional developments, two family engagement events. We've supported 12 novice or new teachers. We've held 328 PLC meetings this year and we'll have five RTI data team meetings. Another priority for us this year with our Title I funds were our instructional materials and programs. Listed on this slide are many of the ways that we have spent these funds some of which are Orton-Gillingham materials and interactive OG, Reading A to Z, iReady Reading and Imagine Learning programs. We've purchased many math instructional materials and resources, a Bridges Math Intervention Program, magnetic whiteboards and letters for all of our teachers, decodable reader sets, Resource Mate, 95% group Bridge the Gap materials, and Whisper Phones, Mirrors, and various other materials to help aid teachers in phonics instruction. As in previous years, we've continued to use Title I funds to equip our school with the latest technology equipment. This year, we've used funds to purchase two additional ViewSonic boards for classrooms and three replacement document cameras. Parent engagement opportunities is another way that we spend our funds each year. So far this year, we've had our Fall Learning Festival at the beginning of the year and a virtual RTI training. To come this year, we're looking forward to another big end of the year celebration of learning, as well as our transition to kindergarten and sixth grades and the supporting materials that come along with those. So be on the lookout for more information to come soon about these upcoming events. Another thing that we've done this year is done some family surveys. We like to keep a, a gauge on how our families are feeling and how we can serve them even better. So based on our most recent family survey, here's some of the feedback that we got. 89% of families feel welcomed at Roy Waldron. 93% of families feel connected with their child's teacher. 95% feel that the school provides a safe place for their child to learn. 89% felt that Roy Waldron encourages families to be involved. And another 89% felt that Roy Waldron informs families of their child's progress and success. Some suggestions for next year that we got from staff and for parents are listed below. I'm gonna go through those with you. So staffing felt that the best use of funds this year were with staffing, instructional materials and supplies, and technology. Their suggestions for next year are additional staffing, 
replacement technology, instructional materials and programs, and additional family engagement opportunities. Parent suggestions and feedback are as follows. They felt like suggestions for next year would be teacher correspondence via class dojo and email are their preferred methods of communication, parents requested family engagement events, and then academic standards and helping my child with learning from home are the most requested topics for those parent engagement events. Thank you so much again for participating in the PowerPoint and the slideshow for the spring planning meeting this year. You'll be receiving another message with a short survey. If you could please help us to prioritize our funds for next year by completing that survey, we would be very appreciative. We truly do appreciate and value all of your input. If you have any questions, comments, or would like some more clarification, please feel free to reach out and contact us at school. We're more than happy to talk with you whenever we can. Thanks again.